Hey everyone, welcome back to Cave of Ordeals Three Heart Run. This is Gushi. This is Double Snap a lot. And um, oh, it's Ice Enemy. Yep. I hope you brought your icebreaker. <laughs> everyone, tell two lies and one truth. <laughs> or I don't know. Oh, should I do that right I'd, now and see if people can guess the lies? You, the if truth? you want, but that's like the worst game ever. Well, it's okay. Well, it's not a bad game in principle. It's just everyone always chooses horrible things. Like they're just not clever about it. Most people are. Well, you know me. I'm clever. You are clever. Go for it. Fishing for kids. I'm trying to think of. Do a, we want to do two lies in one? Is that what it's supposed to be, or is it supposed to be like two truths and one lie? I think. I think it's two truths and two lies, or two truths and one lie. Yeah. yeah. So, now it's kind of true. Oh, the truth is out there. Yep. Um, are there any more bats? Oh, there's these guys. Wow. Yeah, Sword has pretty big hitbox. And then he just smashed this thing. This is the only obstacle that is not present the second time through. <laughs> So when she says you need uh, the ball and chain, it's like, you no, you don't. Anyway, I'm going to think about that uh, two truths and a lie thing. You said we should talk about Cube, and that reminded me of a list I saw on the internet today about movies that uh, should have themed hotel hotels after them. Because apparently they're turning um, the Hogwarts set into a hotel. Awesome. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. And like, I want to go there because I'm going to charge way too much, but... And for the most part... And I'm not in England. For the most part, the, the article is pretty well written. I'm like, you know hotels and movies, half of them are bad for you. Like, they had the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. That's a real hotel. But No, it's not! They built that! And they had uh, the Bates Motel. Which, that's another thing that I just thought of. You know how, um... Why do you go to the Bates Motel? You know how whenever anyone talks about the Bates Motel... It's not a good hotel. You talk about the Bates Motel, and the picture is always like that house. That's not the hotel. I know. I just, I just realized this when I was looking at it today. I'm like, that's not the actual hotel. That's the, uh, that's the dude's house. The hotel looks just kind of like a regular motel. Yeah, that's why you would not tell from any other place. Well, anyway, like half of them were bad hotels, but they were written like, oh, some people have reported about issues with the showers in this place, or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> issues in the showers. <laughs> but then, um, uh, and the shining one was really good. It's like, yeah, the bartender's really cool to talk to, and <laughs> just. But then they get to apparently some they they had cube on the list, and they're like, someone should make a cube hotel, and then just like all of a sudden they went away, and they're like, yeah, a cube hotel would be good, but you might have issues with being cut up into tiny little pieces. Huh. There's some rats on you. Ghost rats. Yeah. Remember the rats from Psychonauts? We talked about this last time. Oh. We talked about this in the Arbiter's Grounds. Okay, then I won't do it again. Other than reiterating how horrible they are. <laughs> it's a good game. It is. So there's there's a ghost rat room. It really helps if you know what's in each room before you go into it. For most rooms, at least. Uh, and I completely forgot about this one. Oh, it's these guys! Yeah! Not for long. I'm gonna have to, like, watch this several times before I start it again. Ouch. Yeah, I, I did say in Arbiter's Grounds that using the swing the ball and chain around your head doesn't work that well. That's evidence. They're up. Coins. Yeah. But yeah, the reason why I was thinking about Cube is because apparently that guy. I feel bad that I forgot the doctor's name. Dr. Kendo. Yes, but I do remember he's a doctor. He has a PhD in... YouTube awesome. commenting? Yeah, he's actually good at it. <laughs> you had to go! Because, you know, YouTube commenting is very difficult. You have to go to school for like 12 years to learn how to do it properly. Or you can be like me and just go... Go troll on the cracked forums. I so I, I also said in Arbiter's Grounds, these guys are a lot, are simple to kill with the ball and chain. Here's how. Just hit them, and then it'll hit them again on the return trip and kill them. So you don't have to waste any bomb arrows, because you cannot refill your bombs in Cave of Ordeals. 
Also, I learned correct recently that Alfred Hitchcock was an ass. Also, of course he was. You didn't know that. Like, I didn't know to what lengths he was. That's, like, common knowledge. Anyway, you stop talking. I'm going to talk to the people now. Here's how you refill your arrows in Cave of Ordeals. You get to this room where there's an archer. And basically walk back and forth until he shoots an arrow. And if it sticks in the ground, you can try running over it and picking it up. Sometimes it doesn't work like that for some reason. But you just keep moving back and forth. This is... You need patience for this. See, in there I got an arrow. <laughs> and then I... Th oh, I got two arrows. And then I think I fast forward through this, because you don't want to watch me doing this for like... Ten minutes. Well, then you kill him and take his arrows. You can't. So I, I use this to refill my arrows. I actually don't have to refill that many this time. And another trick is that once you get full of arrows, before you shoot him, wait for him to shoot one far into the room again. I think I do this. Yeah. See, so I'm gonna. I'm still gonna move back and forth, and I'm waiting for him to shoot one into the room again, so that when I use one arrow on him, I can pick it, the one he just shot. Like that, and then you're full of arrows again. So that is how you refill your arrows and cave of ordeals, and if you're doing a three heart run with minimal supplies, that is essential to know. Also notice how I just shot and missed? That is not the end of the world. If you shoot it into the ground and miss, you can pick up the arrow in a, after you kill everything else. I forget which game it was. But it was like some kind of RPG because you could loot guys you killed. Fallout 3? No, because it was a bad thing, this system that I'm complaining about right now. Oh, okay. Um, but they would have a set number of ammo in them, and as they shot at you... Yeah, I noticed how I just picked up one of the arrows that I shot nice. the ground. As they shot at you, they would run out of... Their supply would go down of ammunition, but they wouldn't actually run out. Oh. So... Yeah, they'd be using up your ammo, but wouldn't... Which sucks. And, like, waiting them out would also There's mean... There's another arrow in the ground. It wouldn't, like, actually make them run out, so that was, like, not cool. I know there are some games where, like, each enemy will have a... Like, the enemies with guns will have, like, a clip or two. Yeah. And as they shoot at you, it will use up their ammo. And, um, they will run out. Yeah, the only time... But then you're... also you can't pick up any bullets. Yeah, but, like... That's okay, because they run out too, so it's not mean. Yeah. It's not taunting you. What's in, oh, there's a uh, Stealth of Warriors in this room. I think this strategy that I use here is the same as in my better runs. I think I'm just trying to like get their attention right now. By dangling. Yeah. The savory. I call it the Dingleberry strategy. It's unnecessary. <laughs> Win them. Oh yeah, okay, my strategy is actually a little different. Yeah, and here's how you kill these guys with a ball and chain. Uh, one hit knocks them apart, and then as it comes back, it hits them again and kills them. I, yeah, I really need to do that second run, just so you guys know all the like new advanced strategies that I'm talking about. Because <laughs> I feel bad saying, like, oh, there's a different strategy, and then not actually saying it, because I don't want to ruin the surprise for when I do it for real. But just know that this run-through is far from optimal. I think this is the first room with bubbles in it. No, there was one room with just like a, a shit ton of bubbles, I don't remember that. But bubbles are also something that ended a lot of Cave of Ordeals runs. And if you know that, you can probably tell one of the limitations that I put on my second run. <laughs> Not gonna tell you now, but you should be able to figure it out when I say that bubbles ended a lot of runs. Also, if you actually hit them twice before they hit the ground, they die on their backs. That's like the yeah. only time in the game that you'll see that. The spiders. Skulltulas. Here's some more hearts. 
I think I forgot to point out which rooms have the giant rupees in them, though. Because, uh... There's one room, I think it's the 39th room that has a orange rupee worth 100, and then I think there's one that has a silver rupee worth 200. So what strategy do I use for this room? Have we made an Avenge Sevenfold reference yeah. around those before? Alright, yes. just double checking. Are, are you just like forgetting all of the stuff we said already? Yeah. It, I forgot to get a tattoo on me. The skull bat? No, the what we haven't haven't covered. Oh. Okay, Leonard Shelby. That movie was so good. It was. Yeah, in the new strategy, I don't use bombs there. Because I... There, you'll see why. There's very much a reason why you want to use less bombs on your second run. At least in rooms like this. How come Christopher Nolan doesn't use Guy Pearce anymore? I don't know. Like, he's becoming one of those, you know, directors that likes using actors. And Guy Pearce is pretty cool. He was in The King's Speech. And he's, Guy Pierce is going to be in Mildred Pierce, the miniseries on HBO. Cool. Yeah, oh, like, Kate Winslet. like Christopher Nolan is, is one of those reuses to actors, guys, but he's not reusing Guy Pierce. That is a good point. Also, this room's kind of a smiley face when you first walk into it. <laughs> that's intentional. So, that's a really good strategy for the bubbles. If you can get them to fly up to you and use the ball and chain. Again, sometimes it will get through that, but there is a way... I don't know if it happens in this run through. I kind of hope it does so I don't have to explain it, so I can actually start to see it. Or at least so that I can explain it concurrently with the visual aid. It'll probably happen, because there's so many more bubbles in this run. I really like their bubbles. Bubbles and rats. Bubbles, rats, and keys. Which honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons why I haven't finished my uh, second run through. Not so much because it's so hard, but because every run through I'm gonna have to go through all of the bubbles, rats, and keys and it's so freaking tedious. so I get really frustrated when I die. Oh, the, yeah, here's the 30th room. And, uh, for most of the game, I didn't really skip the text, but I figured, since each one of these says basically the same thing, I skipped through some of it. And then the second run through, I just skipped through all of it. By the way, each 10th room, they'll release fairies into various places in the overworld. 